guys. What did you think? Oh, I can't believe I gave up a sash of new flaming foam. This. Oh, go into my room. Uh, uh, hey, uh, what? You know, I'll set you on fire later. I'm just too tired. <laughs> Wait a minute, Harold! The new one! Oh my boy! Yeah. It's going for this review! I'm sure of it! Obnoxious? Just go to your closet and we'll start the review. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the next part of the Halloween special for Cartoon Corner. First, let's get the introductions out of the way. First off, we have Harold, the assistant to the devil. Happy Halloween, my dear victims. Obnoxious, the twelfth ghost from the demon chest. I hate being in the closet. My head writer puppet. And yours truly, Y boy. Oh, like, hello, why didn't you introduce me more? You're not important enough for an introduction, Vanilla. Like, asshole. And today we're here to see how obnoxious fucked up on getting us something actually terrible to watch. Hey, I, I thought it was gonna be good. Now, now, let's not all barrage obnoxious insults saying how much of a complete screw up he is. Hello. Now we have the Garbage Pail Kids animated series to review. Huh? What? Well, I thought... Well, guys, I thought... Well, obnoxious, you, you wanted this to be a very special review, right? So I thought it would be cool for all five of us to review this show together. You know, for Halloween. I gave you each 20 bucks. Well, let's get trashed. Yeah. So where should we start, guys? Oh, like, why do you even ask that? Like, we're obviously going to start from the trading cards. Like, duh. I wasn't being... Ugh. Whatever, just go, Vanilla. The cards were made in the late 80s to satirize those gay-ass Cabbage Patch kids. While those dolls were cute, these were gross, vile, and violent. Like, you know, what every kid loved at the time, but like every cool thing ever, they were banned from schools and parents protested the crap out of these things. They thought that they were offensive to kids with disabilities. Really? Nevertheless, on to the animated series. The series was decided to be produced by CBS and made by the animation wizards Hanna-Barbera. But like with the cards, the series was met with a hailstorm of complaints and criticism and protests before it was ever released. Members of various organizations protested, even going as far as forcing CBS sponsors to stop sponsoring the Garbage Pail Kids show. Another reason why the show did bold well with the public was because of a deliciously disgusting film, The Garbage Pail Kids Movie, that was released along the same time as this show. But I have no idea what those protesters were talking about. How could scenes like this... You got a poker face. <laughs> ...be anything other than family wholesome entertainment? Ah... Uh, Guys, guys, we haven't even started talking about the Garbage Pail Kids yet, so let's start this review, yo! You know what? <gasps> Good job, Harold. So let's get trash as we watch the Garbage Pail Kids animated series. We start off the first episode of the series with a news broadcast to all the children watching the show. Good morning, children. I am here to tell you about the Garbage Pail Kids show. It is disgusting, obnoxious, and worst of all, gross. Well, the bitch got one of those, right? Like Shh. I think it's terrible that they would put something like this on TV. 
Don't you? I sure do. Good. I'm glad you agree. Now, change the channel. So we move on to the intro, and it... I got nothing. Oh, don't worry about it. The writer of the song was probably sniffing paint that they while writing it, so our simple minds couldn't possibly understand it. Exactly, this intro is just complete randomness. And musically, it flows just as well as a river of bricks, paved over in some network. Take a listen. Oh, so this is what it's like to be sung to by Y Boy. Oh, Zenga! Ugh. Woo! Moving on, the main show has been the uh, five sketches. The first segment being the game collector that goes something like this. Hey, Timmy! What are you watching? I'm watching the Garbage Pail Kids! Garbage Pail Kids! And sadly, that is as good as the acting gets in these opening bits. Moving on, we reach the second and most famous part of this series, the parody trap theater bits, as I like to call them. First the little dumpster baby of the episode comes out of a trash can, twinkles his fingers, and turns this ordinary theater into the GPK theater. How can it do that? <laughs> if you're expecting me to do a Family Guy reference, <laughs> drop dead. Okay. So now we move on to the actual segment, and it's basically the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. But this one is even less creative. It just takes the movie, like King Kong, Superman, James Bond, and just places garbage pail kids in it. Oh, like I don't agree with that assessment, because the Super Mario Bros. Super Show was like, Oz amazing. Oh, like it's more creative than that, like give it some credit. Oh, you're right, Vanilla. It has some creative humor, doesn't it? Like jokes like this. You'll never get away with this. Of course we will. Say, what's this? That gold shipment's for the town with no name. You better not take it. Who wants it? We're stagecoach robbers, not gold robbers. Real creative. Oh. Like, come on. Like, I think you're being a little bit too harsh on the jokes. Okay, you may have a point. The jokes aren't bad. Okay, in a sense, they're just basic. They are just the most simplest jokes that a writer can come up with. Like, let's just look at this scene from Idaho Spud in the Temple of Trash. Hmm, creative title. Shh! This is where Plain Jane Idaho Spud and Colonel Corn. Ooh, those are surely gross characters. Are being held by lizard people, and they'll be soon have their heads shrunken into Ned heads. And the first one to have their heads shrunken is Colonel Corn here. Duh, I wonder how this joke will go. <gasps> Got any last requests? Like maybe apple or raisin bread stuffing. This isn't such a good idea, fellas. When it gets too hot, I... <sighs> oh, like fine. The jokes are completely stock and predictable. Is that what you wanted to hear? Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, how about if I like one up you on your little analysis? Air quotes by pointing out that this show's idea of disgusting air quotes again is along the lines of just being pied in the face. Yes, because as we all know, pies are the most disgusting food out there, especially cream. Ah, oh, don't do that. No, no, you do not finish that statement. Oh, you're no fun, my boy. 
Now let's talk about the next segment, namely the infomercials and the Garbage Pail Kids groaners. Mainly they have nothing to do with Garbage Pail Kids. Like, at all. That's pretty bad. But what the, but what the concern is making terrible jokes and making other terrible jokes. Like this, for example. Class! Class, come to order! If Farmer Brown had seven cows walking single file down the road, which cow can turn around and say, I see six pairs of horns? I know, I know! The first cow! Wrong! None of them! Cows can't talk! Oh, are you chuckling yet? No, too bad. There's a whole 13 episodes of this. Oh, like, can we get this review over with? Because I'm getting so tired from all this bitching. Fine, your highness. We'll go on to the segment that actually focuses around the garbage pail kids. Instead of just characters who are kind of garbage pail kids, but are definitely not garbage pail kids. Yay! I'm going to have to smack you one of these days. Oh. Okay, starting off this segment, we get five of the little darlings to watch. We get Split Kid, Patty Putty, Clog Dwayne, Terry Kloss, and Elliot Mess. And you might be want to say, Hey, don't those characters look so cute and adorable? Well, considering most of the characters are supposed to look like this, that's a bad thing. Thank you, Hannah Barbera, for making Garbage Pill Kids actually cute. Um, moving right along, we see two of the Garbage Pill Kids, Terry and Patty, playing with a little robotic porcupine. Hello, I'm Peter Pushpin. Who are you? I am Terry. I am Patty. We've already been introduced. Today, I am going to tell you a nice story. Do you want to hear it? Hmm, that reminds me of something. Oh, hey, we turn off the lights! Come dream with me tonight. So, like, after <laughs> these guys just wrecked off a joke from Nostalgia Critic. Vanilla. Oh, like, it's true. The porcupine goes totally fudging haywire and completely destroys itself. Then we go and see the boy Garbage Pail Kids playing with a card that I totally would have if my parents weren't carrying assholes. Like with the porcupine, the car also goes haywire and it smashes on top of the head of- Ouch! Who said that? I did. Tara Strong? Oh, like she's just a voice actress. A goddamn great voice actress and the only scene that's making me- Tolerate this scene. Oh, but doesn't this bring up another point? The point being that most of the voice actors in the show play multiple characters without changing their voices or personalities in the slightest. And that kind of makes them undistinguishable from each other and they kind of blend all together. Wow, obnoxious. I didn't know you could say that many big words. <laughs> Thank you. Hey! Oh yes, you might be wondering. Hey. These kids look positively cute. Where the hell are my garbage pail kids? And here's the answer. Apparently, the garbage pail kids actually act like the Power Rangers as they have to transform into the garbage pail kids state. So trash can Zordon here. And this is a completely stupid idea because garbage pail kids are supposed to always be disgusting and not have to have a break from it. So they completely lose this idea in the third episode! Awesome! Oh, and thus they are given each the five super cool powers. Like one gets the power to separate his body parts, the other can turn into go. One gets the power to rip off Mr. Fantastic, the power to put your face on your hand, and the power to be one half terrible 80s hipster and one half douchebag prep. Like guess which ones are the most dangerous? None of them. Oh, like smart ass. So Trash Can Ken gives the little mistakes their mission. Toys all over town have been destroying themselves 
for some reason, and they have to find out what. And to help them, they have their deus ex naked boy covered in mustard, named Hot Doug. And yes, I am around. How could you tell? Ah. Uh, well, anyway, the kids sporadically put together that the batteries for the toys are what causing the toys to destroy themselves. So, they begin their investigation at the toy store where they bought their batteries. By doing this, they come across a guy that's totally not the villain and tells them to go to not an obvious trap. Surrender now, foul children, and we might still clean you up! Blockbusters! Oh no, it's an obvious trap! Who could have guessed it? Uh... Wait, who are these asshole adults attacking the kids? Uh, obnoxious, you idiot. These are the fun busters, of course. Who? Don't worry, obnoxious. All the info you need is obviously on the trading cards. No, they're not. Don't make me shoot you again. Ahem, <laughs> anyway, the rap scallions then begin to either escape or get caught. Release my pals, you foul, fun busting fiends! This may have been a bad idea! So Dwayne and Patty escape while Kit, Terry, and Elliot are thrown into a dungeon! Luckily, the kids are able to send the delicious hot dog boy to tell the others where they are. So Dwayne and Patty go and they release them off screen, in fact. Oh, and then they go to stop the ass busters. Like, trash style. Your plan worked perfectly. When these batteries are delivered, every toy in America will slow to an agonizing halt. <laughs> Not likely, fiends! Let's do it, we do best. Trash the place! Oh, I'm gonna scrub you, oh, clean you, filthy oh, little oh, punk! Oh, yeah. I like to watch this early. Yeah. Get those renegade rumps! Wow! Crazy tap dance! Bingo! Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Have a drink, lady! Oh, head to the hills! Yeah. You haven't heard the last of us! Yes. Yes, you have, actually. Does that voice sound familiar to you? Yes, very. Aha! Mr. Killjoy, the toy store owner! No, should I have? Uh, I mean, I should have known. He wasn't grossed out when he saw us. Never trust an adult who isn't grossed out by a garbage pailer. Well, that settles it. You can't trust me because I don't find any of these little kids disgusting in the slightest. What are you for? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> that's good. And that's basically it. The kids return to normal and the segment ends with... Mmm. Yes, it ends with hot dog sleeping. And that's the end of our look at the Garbage Pail Kids animated series. So, did this series really deserve all the criticism and protest against it? Quite honestly, no. Let me start this off by boy. For one thing, the show is not gross in the slightest, but there's a big thumbs down for moi. And the main show all together is basically just a less creative version of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Oh, what if I'm trying to be quite honest, that is actually true. Most of the jokes in this show are basically so, like, just predictable and simple. It's not even close to, like, funny. Like, I can't even troll up if it's that blonde. So, yeah, that's basically it. Not gross, not funny, just plain bland and boring. So it did not deserve on any of the criticism that it got. If the parents had watched the show, they would have been fine with it, I'm guessing. And so because of all that criticism and crap that happened in the show, no one ever saw the Garfield Kids animated series, except for in the UK. 
Congratulations! You just won the Garbage Pail Kids Award! <gasps> you mean that completely pointless reward thing at the end of both of the episodes? Yes. <gasps> oh my god! What did we win it for? You won it for being jerks because you made fun of this awesome show that I'm part of. How dare you say that? Our characters are undistinguishable from each other. Take me for example. I got the most distinguishable voice. So thanks to everybody for watching this Halloween special. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, my apologies.